Expedite, the pre-workout is designed to really help you get through those moments where you feel a little fatigued. Sometimes your body does get a little tired, you know, it gets a little sore. But this kind of stuff picks you right back up. Hey everybody, Marcus Viegas being joined with the reigning WBA super middleweight, super, super middleweight champion of the world, Mr. Callum Smith here in Los Angeles. I take it supporting team member, Anthony Kral against uh, Lomachenko. Yeah. Tough fight, man. Tough yeah. fight against Lomachenko. Yeah, very tough fight there. Lomachenko was, if not the one of best powerful bound fights in the world. No, he's a special talent and it's a tough ask, but Anthony's a good fighter. He's a former world champion. He's he's been at the top level. He's proved he, he belongs there, and he's had a very good camp. He's in the best shape possible, and no, you never know. He, he'll come and he'll give it his best, and no stranger things have happened in boxing. But he knows the task at hand. Lomachenko is a very special fighter, but Anthony's in this sport to test himself against the very best and see how good he really is. Did you get a chance to see Anthony in camp? Yeah, I trained with him. Yeah. We train with each other every day, and. I think he'll say himself, he's had a, the, the best camp he's probably had. I think physically he's in the best shape he's ever been in so far in his career and he'll need to be, you know, with these types of fights you've got to be in the best shape possible to give yourself the best possible chance of winning and at least done that. It seems so far everything that everybody's tried to do against Lomachenko yeah. hasn't worked except for Salido. You yeah. roughed him up, which yeah. is really chaotic. Yeah. Is that the route to go, you think, at this point in Lomachenko's uh, career? Possibly, although I think when Salido done it, Lomachenko's a little bit new to the pro game and I think if he was to try and do it now, he'd deal with it a little bit better, but I don't know, I've, you know, and he's got a very good coach, Joe Gallagher, they've done a lot of studying over the past so many weeks and they've got no certain shots they feel may, may cause Lomachenko trouble and it's always a little bit different when you actually get in there, so we'll see how the, the, the fight pans out, but studying Lomachenko, he's a hard fighter to find, weaknesses in, obviously he's very good for a reason, but no, Joe and, Joe and Anthony are confident that they've got Little things they feel would be effective. How would you fight Lomachenko? Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm a lot bigger at the minute, but I don't know, he's a good fighter, he can stand and fight. I just think you can't afford to let him get into a rhythm. Once he finds his rhythm, that's when he, he becomes into his own and he becomes you know, a very, very good fighter. But, you know, you can't run away and invite pressure and you can't just put it on him and stand in front of him. You've got to just be a little bit more smarter about it and punch when you when you need to punch and know when to move away and defend and stuff. But it, it's a good fight. I'm looking forward to watching it. Obviously, I'm part of you know, Anthony's team and you know, I'm biased towards him, but I think it'll be a very good fight. Speaking of uh, fights, yeah. fans here in the United States heard of you by winning the tournaments yeah. and they're interested in you. I, I see it, you know, day in and day out. You know, when are you going to come here and fight in the United States, you think? June the 1st, yeah. uh, Madison Square Garden, New right. York, on the um, Andy Joshua, Jalen Miller, Miller Bill, which is, you know, it's a great card to be on and I've always yeah. wanted to fight at Madison Square Garden, so it's a, you know, a box tick for me personally and I'll be defending my world title against you know, someone in the top 10, 15 in the division and then hopefully in the you know, September, October we can arrange a unification fight with one of the other champions. I seen Gilberto Ramirez at the public workout yesterday and you now he seems keen to make that fight so fingers crossed we can do it. He didn't relinquish the belt, right? No, no, he okay. kept the belt and he said he'll, he'll come back down to 168 for a big fight and I think me and him's a very big fight at the, at the division, if not the biggest one to make at the minute so you know, fingers crossed we can that both teams can come to an agreement and it's a fight that you know I want, he wants and I think the fans would like to see it, I think it would be a good entertaining fight. How would you rank everybody in division? Because I've talked to some of the other super middleweights and obviously they think they're number yeah, one, but yeah. if you are honest and say, you know what, I think it's, it's Callum yeah. because he won the tournament and, and all that, but how do you rank everybody? Yeah, it's tough, that's, that's the reason I want unification fights because there's four world champions who probably believe they're the best in the world and I believe I'm the best, but no, I think Alberto Ramirez is a very good fighter. David Benavidez is a very good fighter. He looked he looked good against Jay Leon Love a few weeks ago. Kayla Plant had a very good win against Ukata guy. No, I think he, he was the underdog in that fight and he put in a good performance. So there's no, there's four very good champions. I think Benavidez is going to fight Darrell for his old belt, and I think he wins it. So no, I think there'll be four champions and four unbeaten champions. So I want to make them fight. I want the four of us to fight each other and come up with a true number one in the division. Is uh, Eubank at all a uh, thought? Uh, not at the at the minute. I think Rose beat him pretty convincingly and you no, know, he beat De Gale, but I think De Gale was a little bit shot and 
if he can go and get a, a relative win against the top name in the division or get himself a world title, then though the fight makes more sense. But at the minute, I'd like to fight one of the champions. They're, they're the fights I want to make. Because you, you would think, you know, he has a big name over in the UK. Yeah. It would generate a lot of interest, yeah, yeah, make you a good, good purse, good amount of money. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Like I said, if if I can't get a unification fight, then you know maybe we look towards the Eubank fight. But I don't see why the unification fight can't be made. You know, I think if you speak to the other champions, they'd like to do the same. You know, I think everyone wants to become undisputed and be the true number one in the division. And the only way you can do that is by fighting the other champions. And that that. I, I've achieved the dream of becoming a world champion. Now the next goal is to become a unified champion. Out of those four champions, Plan, Benavides, well, Darrell, sorry, sorry. Not out of the people in the division, who do you feel is would be the most trickiest or the harder fight be just simply because of the style they present in the ring? Um, I think Benavides or Ramirez, I think they're the two who I look at as no, the number two of the division. I think Benavidez is no, he's a big puncher. He's young. I think he's improving all the time. And Ramirez is a no, six foot three southpaw. It's not really the easiest. Not fight. common. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not really the easiest fight to prepare. They don't make us Mexicans that big either. <laughs> That's what I mean. So you know, stylistically, he's a, he's a nightmare for anyone. And no, he can he, as tall as he is, he can fight on the inside like a Mexican. So I think the two of them are tough fights. They're both hard to beat. But I think. I'm big for the weight as well. I'm six foot three, and I can you know, I can fight and box as well. And I think stylistically, any of them fights are great matchups, and they're the fights I want to be involved in. I want to be involved in good fights for the fans, and I think a fight with either of them two or Caleb Plant are very good. So, what's all this talk I hear about Bavol, about moving down and potentially yeah, fighting? I think we boxed in the amateurs in 2011. He beat me, and you know, he's a good fighter, and he's doing very well at, at light heavyweight. And I think when People heard we boxed in the amateurs, they thought oh, it would be a good fight in the professionals, which I believe it will. And then I think he said he can make 168, and you know, if he does move to 168, then I'm sure that's a great fight. Or you know, in the future, I'll maybe move up to 175 and the fight could happen then. But so unless he moves to 168 for the time being, I think there's other fights for me at this weight before moving up. And like I say, in the future, I think it is a great fight. I think he's a very good fighter and you know, he's a very good champion. We haven't seen this division this stacked, especially with undefeated champions. Uh, shoot, I don't. It doesn't even come to my mind. I don't. I don't know since when. Yeah, I think you no. Know, all the champions were all young. We're all twenty odd. We're no, there's not in the thirties, and like I say we're all unbeaten. So the two unbeaten fighters against each other always, always it makes it interesting and makes for an exciting fight. So like I say, the division's very good at the minute. I believe I'm number one, the, and there's probably three other people who disagree with me and claim they're number one. So. The plan from now to the future is to sort that out and become up with a true number one in the world. In your opinion, when like the dust clears and there's that that signature fight that has to happen for you that says, you know what, he cemented himself in his division because he beat this guy. Yeah. Who's going to be the other guy, in your opinion, standing across from you? Um, possibly Benavides. I think. Yeah, I think. No, I think he's he's young. He's coming through. He's getting better and better. And I think he'll win as well. Title back off off. Andy Darrell, I think he. You think he beats yeah. Plant. He beats everybody. Yeah, I think he'd beat Plant. Yeah, so I think if he used to them fight Plant, and hopefully I can beat Ramirez, and then we'll have two belts each and fight each other. That, there you go. That's for all the belts, all the marbles. That's the dream, the dream, the <laughs> dream route. But they say we, anything can happen in boxing, and got to just take each fight as it comes. And for the minute, I've got to fight on June first, and I've got to keep my belt because if I lose my belt, then I lose the the chance to have a unification fight. So no, I'm fully focused on June first. All right, well, I can't wait to see your uh, U.S. debut and those fights. Uh, I hope they do happen for you. As always, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, Callum Smith here in Los Angeles supporting Anthony Crawler, who fights this Friday on ESPN Plus against Vasily Lomachenko in Los Angeles.